Hey, what is going on guys? Nick Heron here with Fantasy Football Facts, talking sleepers in the 2018 Fantasy Football Drafts. Guys, I want to talk about wide receivers today, so I'm going to give you my top five wide receiver sleepers. These are all players who are going in the 10th round or later in PPR formats, so I'm going to give you guys that are real late players that you can get near the end of your draft. A lot of them are going undrafted right now, and I think they're guys that can potentially really exceed that average draft position. I don't typically look for guys that have good, like, you know, decent floors but no upside at the end of drafts. What I want to see are players, hopefully they have good floors, but even if they don't have good floors, do they have the upside to potentially be wide receiver three, wide receiver two, or even if everything breaks well, do they have that possibility to break into the wide receiver one category? Those are the types of players that I'm going to be talking about today. So, with that said, let's take a look at it. I want to let you guys know first, too, I will have a link to all of my fantasy football rankings for the 2018 season below. So, if you go check that one out, it's a Google spreadsheet. You can see it. It you know has every position in PPR. You can see it. You can uh, rank it how you want to. You can sort it how you want to, different things like that. But uh, that's my personal list that I will be using in my drafts this year. So, hopefully, to help you guys out. Now, with that said, let's hop into it. Let's take a look at these wide receivers that we're talking about. Number one is my favorite late sleeper wide receiver, and that is Chris Godwin of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is a guy who's going right now as wide receiver 57 in the 12th round of 12-team drafts right now, and I have him ranked at number 44. So I actually probably could potentially move him up even a little bit beyond this, but he recently surpassed Deshaun Jackson on the reported depth chart there in Tampa Bay, so he's expected to start in two wide receiver sets. Now, it's worth noting that most teams are running primarily three wide receiver sets in, in the NFL nowadays. They run a ton of three wide receiver, but even still, when they're running two wide receiver or when they're near the goal line, we want our players on the field. And Chris Godwin is expected to be on the field in those types of situations, so this is a really good thing. One thing that I want to also say is that Chris Godwin... Yes, he had an okay season last year, but also keep, keep in mind when he actually started to produce. Because it wasn't until the second half of the season that he actually had a real opportunity. And at that point, he had 442 yards in the final eight games of the season. If you extrapolate that out over a full season, we're talking nearly 900 yards receiving, which again, doesn't sound like that much, but do you know how many receivers had 900 yards last year? Not that many. So seriously, if you look at this guy, he's a physical player. He's six foot one, 210 pounds roughly. He's a big physical guy who can go up and get the ball. He's athletic. He does a lot of good things on the field. And he's a guy that I think has a real possibility of breaking out this season. One other thing to keep in mind with the Tampa Bay offense, they finished fourth in the NFL last year in passing yards. A lot of people don't realize that. I mean, they're an elite passing game. Their running game, eh, maybe not so much. We'll see. But I think that passing game is going to be there. We expect them to not be a particularly great team, particularly defensively. So if they're not very good defensively, that probably means they're going to be passing a lot this season as well. I really, really like Chris Godwin late. I think he has the potential to possibly, I know this is going to sound crazy, an outside shot to outscore Mike Evans this season. I know, sounds crazy. I'm not predicting it. I'm just saying there's a possibility. So let's move on now to the second wide receiver on this list, and that is Tyler Lockett of the, the Seattle Seahawks. Now, Tyler Lockett right now is being drafted as the wide receiver 55. I have him ranked at wide receiver 43. He's going in the 12th round right now of drafts. And one thing to look at with Seattle is how many players left this offseason. We lost Jimmy Graham. They lost Paul Richardson. I mean, they lost Jerron Brown, or they added Jerron Brown, excuse me, this offseason. But Jerron Brown's not a guy that I'm particularly worried about. I don't think he's somebody that has the upside of a Tyler Lockett, at least this season. But one thing I will say is that I think that this offense is going to be interesting. I think they're going to pass the ball more than people expect them to. And with that many targets leaving with Paul, with Paul Richardson and Jimmy Graham leaving this offseason, there's a serious possibility that Tyler Lockett could push for 90 to 100 targets this season. Seriously. And Tyler Lockett with 90 to 100 targets is a guy that could get 60, 70 catches, and at the yards per reception that he averages throughout his career, that could make him a serious fantasy asset. I don't think he was fully healthy in 2017. Actually, I know he wasn't fully healthy in 2017, so I'm kind of just disregarding what happened last year, in addition to the fact that, like I said, there was more competition for targets. So he steps in now, he's healthy, he's in a better situation at least for himself, I don't think the offense is going to be as good overall, but for himself, in terms of getting targets, I think there's a better possibility, and he still has that big play ability. So, again, 
a lot like Chris Godwin, I think he has serious upside here. I think he could be a wide receiver too. The other thing to keep in mind is that Doug Baldwin is not 100% right now. He said that he's not going to be 100% maybe all season. So if that's the case and he's not getting as many targets as he normally does, that just means more targets potentially for Tyler Lockett. I really like him late in drafts, and he's just a steal where he's going right now. Almost no cost to it with serious upside. Next, we've got a wide receiver that's a rookie, and that is Anthony Miller of the Chicago Bears. Now, Anthony Miller is going as the wide receiver 56, again, right around the 12th round. I have him ranked as wide receiver 46. He's a second-round pick. He's a guy who was a big-time producer at Memphis in college, two 1,400-yard seasons. You do not see that very often coming out of college. I mean, those are huge seasons. He, there's an outside possibility that, like Chris Godwin, that he ends up being the wide receiver one in this offense this season. Again, not predicting that. I'm just saying there's the possibility that it does happen. And I really like that upside, especially where he's going. I mean, you don't have to hardly pay anything for him. He's like a wide receiver five right now on a lot of teams. There's so much value in that, guys. He's been a top wide receiver that uh, throughout every level that he's played at so far. And, I mean, if you look at it, he's been the top wide receiver that they've had in training camp as well. That's something that we do have to keep in mind. Allen Robinson's still getting back from injury. He's not 100% still even heading into the season. I mean, it seems like he's going to play, but he hasn't had great time to, to work with Mitch Trubisky. And if he's not out there in games actually getting the reps with Mitch Trubisky, who is? Anthony Miller. You got it. Let's talk about the next guy, Paul Richardson of the Washington Redskins, currently going as wide receiver 73 off the board. That is so ridiculously low for a guy with this type of upside. Right now, he's going in the 16th round, meaning he's being undrafted in most leagues. I have him ranked as my wide receiver 47, so inside my wide receiver fours. And I expect him to start opposite of Josh Doxson in those three wide receiver sets. I actually have him ranked ahead of Josh Doxson as well. I think that the upside of Josh Doxson, I understand, is higher, but we haven't seen it on the field. And Paul Richardson still has plenty of upside himself. He's going multiple rounds later than Josh Doxson. He's a guy that has had production last year. He had 44 catches for 703 yards and six touchdowns. Now, I understand that's not an amazing fantasy season, but it's valuable. It has some value to it. And he's going to a new offense. I get it. Alex Smith is his quarterback as opposed to Russell Wilson. But I don't think there's actually maybe as many, there's as much of a, a risk for him to not get targets as there was last year in Seattle. He stepped up in Seattle last year when he had the opportunity. He performed pretty well. And I expect that to happen again this year in Washington. If he produces the same numbers that he did last year, he's going to be well worth his current draft price. And I really, really like Paul Richardson where he's currently going. One thing I will say, by the way, with Washington, obviously Jamison Crowder is the wide receiver you want to own. He's the slot guy there. I, we get it. We're not saying that Paul Richardson is going to outscore Jamison Crowder, but there could be two valuable wide receivers there in that Washington offense. I, I, I do believe that's a possibility there in that Jay Gruden type of offense. Last on the list today, Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver John Ross. He's a second-year guy, currently going as wide receiver 56 in the 15th round, a lot like Paul Richardson being undrafted in most leagues. I have him ranked as my wide receiver 53. So one thing I will say about John Ross is that I understand he had basically a completely wasted 2017 season, and I was not high on him last year. I didn't see a whole lot of opportunity because Brandon LaFell was there in front of him. Obviously, A.J. Green was there. They had Gio Bernard. They had Jeremy Hill. They had, uh, obviously, Joe Mixon out of the backfield. I mean, there were a lot of guys that were getting touches in that offense, and I didn't expect Cincinnati to be very good. They weren't good, and John Ross basically did nothing as a rookie. In fact, I, fi I think he technically finished with negative fantasy points on the season. It was rough. I get it. But We've seen him take big steps forward this preseason. Reports out of campus, he's a beast. And obviously, they got rid of Brandon LaFell this offseason. So who's going to step into that starting lineup? It's John Ross. And John Ross is a guy that has the type of speed to take over a football game. He can do what Tyreek Hill can do, stretching the defense, getting past them, making those big splash plays, and potentially putting up huge fantasy days for your team. I understand there's going to be rocky times. There are going to be games where he has one catch for eight yards. I get it. We have to take the good with the bad with this guy. But he's going so late. Like I said, undrafted in most leagues. This is the type of guy that could potentially win you a fantasy league if he hits. If he has even close to the type of production that Tyreek Hill did, there's going to be no question that he's super, super valuable for fantasy. 
And I think that's a, there's a real possibility for that, especially if A.J. Green were to go down. Where are the targets going to go? It's got to go to John Ross. I know it sounds crazy based on what he did last year, but there's the real possibility that he finishes as a wide receiver too this season. And I really, really like him, especially in best ball formats. And I think the Cincinnati offense overall is going to be much better than they were last year. So with that said, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I will still be doing running backs as well, so make sure you stop on back. Check out that video as well. I'm putting a lot of effort into these videos, so hopefully you guys like them. And again, in the comments section below, let me know if you have questions, if you have any suggestions for other types of videos or any other types of players that you want me to discuss. I will certainly take a look at those and uh, go over them with you. And then also, like I said, we do also have a link to my current fantasy football rankings in the description of this video. So go check that out. That'll be updated uh, basically up to the minute as much as I can. So, uh, yeah, check that one out, guys. Again, running backs later today for sleepers. Quarterbacks and tight ends are still going to be coming as well. Thanks again so much. Good luck in your fantasy football drafts. And I will talk to you guys again soon.